Well, I'm yeah. gonna, uh, lovely to meet you both. I'm going to begin by asking if it took much convincing when proposed with the idea of having a documentary made about your lives. I mean, what was your initial reaction? Because you've always been quite a private person, Joe. Yeah, I've always been a private person. And uh, to be honest, I've had a few offers in the past um, doing scripts for a feature film. A lot of big, um, obviously, people interested in doing it. But I, I, it wasn't the right time, you know. And I thought, maybe one day, do something. So when I got approached, you know, from Asian with Vaughan Savelle, obviously a Welsh boy, um, about it. You know, I, I sort of listened to what he had to say. And he was interested. Yes. But at first, I was a bit like 50 50. Yeah, I would have no, thought. Yeah, right. Until obviously, you know, I said, well, what's the story? You know, everybody can see my fights on YouTube. Like, what, what's it going to be about? And obviously, you know, I was saying about how you got there from your life story, you know, with family and everything else. Have you seen it? See so where he brings it out, you know, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm really, really happy I did it. I'm happy with the result. I think he's done a fantastic job. You've obviously put his heart and soul into yeah. it and become friends with him over the course of the nearly two years. And yeah, I think he's done a great job. And for me, even now, I'm, emotionally, I watch it and I'm really, you know, especially my, my late grandfather was dedicated to, passed away a few months ago. You know, the original Joe Calzaghi, Giuseppe Calzaghi, you know, and uh, the way it comes at the end and builds up with the Hall of Fame with my boys talking and... If, you know, sort of really gets to me, and I, I'm really proud of it. You know, I'm really ah. proud of, of 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 what he's done there. Do you, do you think there still is any scope in a feature film being made about you? And if so, who would you like to play you? In a, in a oh, movie? that's a difficult one. I think yeah, definitely uh, scope for a feature film one day because you know it's a real story. It's a real Rocky story. You know, it's not it's not made up. You know, you're fighting not lost with a that's right. Uh, yeah. or, um, <coughs> a musician, an Italian crazy father. Which I think Joe Pesci is going to play you there. Exactly. I thought he was going to play me. Uh, play you? I was saying. she was going to play me. I don't know. Maybe play I'll play yourself. myself. Yeah. Maybe my boy looks a bit like me. Maybe I'll give my exactly. boy a acting lessons. Like, he can. He can do it. I mean, this must be. I mean, you just touched upon it before, but this must be quite a difficult emotional experience to sit through at times, and at the same time, quite surreal watching your kind of lives portrayed back at you in front of a room full of people. It's, it's crazy, yeah. when I first watched it, I was really emotionally drained, um, I think, yeah. in, in, a, in a lot of ways, because it's, it's difficult watching uh, 25 years of your life flashing in 90 minutes. I'm watching you boxing in these little pubs at 10, 11, 12, and building up right through, looking different, different haircuts, different sizes, and other than the same person. And you do forget, I think now I've been retired like seven years, you do, you soon start to forget about things, of course, because I'm, I'm not a boxer anymore. At first you miss it, then you go on to life and do other things. So yeah, you know, to, when I sat and watched it, it was, it was quite draining emotionally, but also I, I was very, very happy in watching it and the job and my family have loved it and, you know, I've had good feedback from friends and I just hope the public, you know, enjoy it and can see a little insight into obviously the relationship between myself and my, and my father, which I think it's um, comes out in it really good. So, yeah, I thought that your kind of relationship was almost the crux of the of the story. I mean, do you think that closeness you have, the fact you can say whatever you want to each other, is is what kind of laid the foundations and formed the basis for what was one of the most kind of triumphant partnerships in boxing history? Well, I think so. Obviously, when Joe, um, obviously he started boxing with young kid, he's not that, but um, then I had to what I can do with, with myself. See, I've got to be good enough to train Joe. That's a bottom line. It wasn't because we're father and son, and some people think, oh, we've got to get together because father and son. No, because I've, I've looked at myself and thought, well, I'm the right person for him. Because don't forget, he's my son, and I'll hurt him. If, if I'm not capable of doing it, I shouldn't be here doing it. And I'll say, Joe, as I said, yes, Dad, you know, you're the, you're the, the trainer that I want. That for me is good. It, but it made me happy and made me, me recognise myself as a trainer, not as a father. So I can dissect that part when Joe box, boxed whatever, you know, I become his father, I become his justice trainer. And that's a powerful part, I think. I can, I can, we, can uh, we can divorce each other, basically, right? For that particular time, that particular time, and the love comes straight after. At that time, there is no love put at all because I couldn't allow myself to be a father. Is it going to war? This is war, not game. Yeah. I mean, is it nice though that sort of post-retirement you've been able to go back to being 
father and son. I mean, I, has the dynamic changed at all? In, in, in no, you know what? Well, uh, yeah, we, we argue a lot less. You know, the only, time we, <laughs> the only time we'd argue is when I was training and losing weight for fights and we see each other every single minute of the day. <laughs> yeah, I'd piss right. him off and he'd piss me off and that would be it. And then we'd, we'd make up like a, like a period of my bloody squabbling women. And men, right. yeah. <laughs> but I think, you know, the good thing is when this when we when we when we using the gym, the difference is when we box the gym, it was, it was boxing, it was training. You know, he was boxer and trainer. When we finish, we go and have a cup of tea. Then it was father and son. And I, I say most of the time, we wouldn't even talk about the fights. You know, we talk about we be intense for two hours, and we go out, we go to the bookies, have a little bit, we go for a coffee, have something to eat, and we just talk about the kids. We talk random. We wouldn't even talk about the fight. We wouldn't touch on it. And I think that was a, that was the difference that we really had to, especially for me, obviously for myself personally. I had to sort of, when I'm in the gym, respect him as a trainer, and like not just that, you know, he, I knew that he was going to just push me hard, no matter what, hard, 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 and tell me, and tell me the truth. You know, he just tell me what it is, you know, if I look like shit one day, he say, you know, if I didn't look that good in the gym, or I didn't fight that great, you know, we would say, and, and that's the way, if I fought well, he'd say he box well, and that's what you, what you want to hear, there's the truth, and you know, you, you trust your father, you trust your best friend as well, so I always think, of course I want to trust what you're going to say. And the trust issues are bigger than, than anything, you know, especially in the sport of boxing when there's a lot of backstabbing and a lot of other things go on. And there's an interesting moment in the documentary. One of the journalists being interviewed said that in your last fight against uh, Roy Jones Jr., that you sort of deliberately didn't knock him out because you wanted to save the experience. You wanted to go the full 12 rounds. I was um, wondering yeah. if there's any truth in that. Would you yeah, enjoy it? Like you, I, um, you know what? <laughs> I, I, I think mindset, you can see normally I have this uh, steely want to destroy you sort of look, but. I guess right, because we made the fight ourselves and I respected him as a, as a man and as a boxer. We sort of promoted the fight and managed the fight. Um, I actually, I was happy to do the rounds. Um, I wouldn't want to disrespect Roy by saying they held him up. I would never disrespect the champion to say that. But what I want to say on my point of it, I did look for the knockout. Hence why my hands were low, I was loose, I was like... I was doing the, I was doing the Roy Jones, I always been a massive Roy Jones fight. I put, I'm sorry, fan. And I was doing what I was Roy Jones in what Roy Jones used to do in a way where I was dropping my hands. And I don't think in the fight before the fight I wasn't intentionally doing it. I wasn't like taking. I was like to me, I was just enjoying myself, and you could see it in the fight. And it is it is true that in in the fight I was actually saying to myself, I'm looking around thinking, this is your last round, Joe. Enjoy. And I would say, and I was actually counting up down the rounds. And I, I was like, I remember about ninth round, I was going. Wow, this is you got three rounds left of your life. <laughs> and after 25 years of boxing, thousands of rounds in the ring, 11th round and 12th round, and I was just, I was just, I was having fun, enjoying the fight. And when the bell went, I knew that was it, you know. And that's, and that's where I think I'm blessed in a way where a lot of fighters do come back. Yeah. And but I knew when to to quit. And Dad was supportive with me when he was saying. And he did, he'll say, no, of course, you, you probably could have gone on a few more it's fights. Yeah, <laughs> but that's hindsight. I was injured all the time. If something happened, if it was injury, then you're going to be like everybody else. Yeah, I think it's so know. important to me that, to retire undefeated. Yeah. Well, yeah, to, talking of retiring undefeated, I mean, you came up against some brilliant fighters, Hugh Bank, Lacey, obviously Roy Jones Jr. Um, and you always won those sort of convincingly. Did you feel perhaps you've never quite been given the recognition you deserve? I, I, I finally got given the recognition at the end of my career. You know, I think at the end of the day, the reality is, you know, I, there was fighters like Charles Brewer, um, Richie Woodall, Robin Reed, um, what's the other guy, Byron Mitchell. They were last, that, there was five, six former world champions I beat that just got beat by a dubious points decision. Then they fight me because it was cheap to get them to fight. So I had everything to lose and everything to gain. So of course it was so, so frustrating. You know, it was hard, hard and to get to, to, to in the press say Joe's not fighting. This it wasn't my fault. I fought good fighters just after they got beat for the world titles. And like I said, you know, it was only because I was getting old, according to, uh, to the Gary Pre Shaw, who's Gary manager, Shaw, Jeff yeah. Lacey, saying, you know, he's gonna come over to England Smash and beat the it. living crab out of me. But, you know, he came over uh, from, <laughs> from sunny Florida <laughs> to a freezing, <laughs> you know co freezing cold Manchester, uh, and there was a bad omen for him. He yeah, was like yeah, shivering yeah. there with his woolies on. I thought, you, like, you've had it. You know, when he looked in my eyes, I think I, I thought, the eyes don't lie. And, and the serious thing is I was willing to give everything in that fight, everything. He'd have to carry me with that ring. But he didn't come with that mindset. He came in there to fight an old champion who was ready to go. 
So as soon as I looked in his eyes, I could I, I could see him. <laughs> I could see the confidence go out of his eyes because he's he's an intimidator. He's used to intimidating people. So I looked at him and said, "Listen, man, you." You've had it. <laughs> You're out, boy. You're out. <laughs> Just one very, very quickly. I mean, what do you guys make of the state of modern boxing? Because I mean, you've obviously been in the sport for such a long time. Have you noticed it change a lot in that time and for the better? Or Personally, the I think it's. Go I don't think it's going for the better. I think there's too many politics in boxing. I think that uh, there's too many titles, uh, too many weight divisions. I think people are starting to lose. You know. Uh, me personally, I couldn't even probably name you more than eight champions, world champions, and there's probably about 54. There's four different weight categories, and they make up like super champions, silver champions. Yeah, it's it's, it's become top. a joke, you know, and that's that's why it was so important for me to unify all the belts to show and be Kessler at the end to show you were number one, because the belt doesn't make the champion; the champion makes the belt. You know, I've been WBO champion. People could say, oh yeah, that WBO champion, I'll be Chris Eubank was WBO champion. At the time, WBO championship was a big title. In my reign, there was six or seven WBC champions, a supposedly most prestigious belt, get beat. I beat a few of them afterwards. So, you know, you gotta work it out, you know? So yeah, I think state of boxing is too much politics. And, you know, you look at the MMA, you look at UFC, you got one champion. And look how big that is. I think it'd be great that they had the Super Six and the Super, like they did the Super Middleweight division, which boosted, yeah. boosted the division. Let's face it, if I had the Super Six when I was around, I would have loved the Super Six. But the Super Six, you know, obviously give fighters like Carl Fosch a name because you, even though he got beat, but because he was in that tournament, and I think it would be amazing, personally, if they had the Super Six going around in, in every weight division to get all the champions together and see who's the best. That's and I right. think that boxing would be a winner from there. Thanks so much for your time today. Much appreciated. That was nice, man. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey, you guys.